during CALP's regular events at the regional level with cash working groups across different contexts, people have reported that a lack of clarity regarding the functions of cash working groups, the tools needed and the leadership and resourcing of the groups themselves present a major challenge. Um, and the good news is that the reason that we is there's now a growing body of practice-based experience to share between cash working group coordinators. So lots of people who've been doing this work day to day have uh, found approaches that seem to support effective responses. There's currently no systematic way of sharing or capturing this experience and we hear from many cash working group coordinators that they are arriving in roles sometimes without a clear handover and have to know what the job means, build tools and processes from scratch that in fact have been developed elsewhere, so quite an efficient, uh, inefficient use of their very precious time. Um, and in the absence of guidance, we therefore set about developing a tip sheet setting out everything that we have collectively learned about doing effective cash coordination at the country level. Um, so handing over to Alice to take us through the process to date. Um, so yeah, just a quick uh, recap on the process to date. So as Sophie said, we want um, this resource to reflect the wealth of practical knowledge that exists on how to do effective, so, sorry, just changing. Yes. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah. As Sophie said, we want this to reach the wealth of practical knowledge that exists on how to do um, effective coordination of cash and voucher assistance. Uh, the regional consultations that were carried out earlier this year provided a great basis. Um, with cash working groups and clusters from 15 uh, different countries sharing their best practices, challenges, useful tools, resources um, for coordination of cash and voucher assistance. So Gabby will talk us through um, how she built on this and the other inputs she got to develop this uh, tip sheet. So we shared the first draft um, of this tip sheet with the Global Cluster Coordination Group, with CALP's Technical Advisory Group, with the Grand Bargain Cash Work Stream Co-Leads and Cash Working Groups Coordinators through um, our CALP's uh, regional representatives. We received some useful feedback and have an interest this um, where possible in the document. And with the additional feedback that we'll get uh, from you today, we will aim to produce a, a final draft for publication by the end of the year. Um, also, in um, just to say, in Geneva and online, I had um, the chance to discuss the um, the document with some of the global clusters cash focal points uh, and in the the short we had we tip, sheet, tip sheets hadn't uh, trickled down properly um, to them sometimes from the global cluster leads but um, so this complicated a little bit the feedback process but we still, uh, managed to get a, a lot of relevant comments uh, from them and and they were um, addressed also uh, and from what came out of the conversation, the most important point was uh, uh, for all to really understand that this document is a practical tool for the cash working groups to build on the best practices to date and also to uh, ensure learning globally. And this is especially since the setups and the work um, that has been done has worked uh, has been, and grown in an organic uh, manner with a lot of variations across context. Um, so this is all just very, very useful learning. Um, and just, yeah, my last point is maybe my main um, takeaway from, from this document is this, that there's a lot uh, to gain from more systematic engagement on uh, cross-sectoral issues um, with more engagement needed uh, from cluster coordinators in the cash working groups and from the coordinators of the cash working groups uh, with the cluster to really build on the, the technical uh, expertise. Because I feel, yeah, it feels, in, and from what came out also from conversation, that there's still um, a, a perception that work is done very much in silos. And so we really all need to make sure we can uh, be better equipped, understand more the width of the expertise that everyone has, um, fully grasp uh, each other's that, um, and ensure together that we can. Um, deliver um, um, cash and vouchers in the most relevant and effective way to the people in need. 
So I'm delighted to now pass the floor to Gabby, who's going to talk us through the cheap shit and open uh, feedback. Hi, thanks, Alice. I hope you can all hear me okay. Um, so I'll pick up the yeah, the story from where Alice left off and, and talk about the, the progress that's been made in cash coordination sort of to date. So there has been some limited progress, and this is what building the tip sheet from. Uh, so there was the World Bank strategic note that came out, and there was the GPPI paper on cash coordination, and these both highlight the need for predictable and intersectoral cash coordination to be formalized and to be resourced. Um, then there was the revised intercluster coordination group terms of reference. And this has clarified the position of the cash working group inside the coordination architecture. Um, and then since then, in the last sort of 12 months or so, there's been progress by the GCC uh, and they've developed a model terms of reference for cash working groups. And that was supported by Cash Cap and Calp. Um, and then there's been this draft cash coordination guidance for cluster coordinators. And if these resources are eventually published, they'll be very helpful, I think, in setting out some of what's been formally agreed to date on cash coordination. Um, and these documents basically aim to clarify where the responsibilities for cash coordination fit inside the humanitarian system and the respective roles of the clusters, the intercoordination inter groups and cash working groups. Um, the thing is, they're not uh, covering areas where formal agreement hasn't been reached. So things like coordination of multipurpose cash and where that sits, or leadership and resourcing of cash working groups. Um, and so uh, late last year, CALT was tasked with seeking feedback on these documents from the cash working groups through these regional consultations that Alice mentioned. Um, and groups basically welcomed the initiative. It's definitely a step in the right direction. But there was a consensus that the areas that are not being covered yet in these formal guidance products so the, are the things that they really need help on for their day-to-day -day, you know, uh, working roles. Um, and so while these key decisions and the official guidance on these aspects of coordination are still pending, there's a big gap. Um, there's a resource that's still needed to help cash working group actors manage the tasks day to day. Um, I'm also working with CALP at the moment on developing that second edition of the State of the World's Cash Report. And the findings to date, it's the, the data still being collected, but they are showing concretely that these continued challenges with cash coordination are presenting a major barrier to quality programming. You can see this as an example on the, the quote on the screen. Um, and given that there's now something like, I think 39 or 40 or so cash working groups uh, around the world, and each of those is gonna have experience of, of what can work and what doesn't work and challenges and its own tools to overcome some of these challenges. Um, the decision has been to commission a tip sheet that tries to consolidate all of those experiences and to support stronger coordination in, you know, while these global agreements are, are still emerging and, and evolving. Um, can you pass me to the next uh, slide, Alice, please? So I should be clear from the beginning, this tip sheet is not a formal or an endorsed guidance on cash coordination and it's not intended to be. Um, so it's been developed precisely because there isn't any formal global guidance on cash coordination and it is a tip sheet. It's a way to share tools, resources, helpful practices um, that can help cash working group coordinators and others um, in the field. And it's based on um, resources and practices that, that people have found useful in their tasks to date. So it's aiming to fill that gap in guidance. Um, and the primary audience is uh, cash working groups, but we are not saying that cash coordination is only done by cash working groups. Clearly other actors are going to have a role to play as well. Um, so as a starting point, the tip sheet is building from those aspects of coordination that have either been formally agreed or are almost formally agreed. So all the, um, the initiatives I, I mentioned previously, the World Bank Strategic Note, the GPPI paper, uh, the new HPC guidance as well, emphasizes multi-sectoral response analysis and it includes this optional chapter for multi-purpose cash um, to support multi-purpose cash coordination and um, then there's the revised published terms of reference for the ICC uh, and then these draft um, GCCG um, uh, products that I mentioned before the cash working group terms of reference and the cash coordination guidance for clusters um, and these two draft documents they haven't yet been agreed and published if they are CALP will make sure that the tip sheet can signpost and, and complement these. If they're not published, then the tip sheet will simply make reference to the discussions um, that were had during the development of the tip sheet that were led by CashCap and CALP, but not to the documents themselves until they're published. 
So building from this starting point, um, I was basically tasked with collecting experiences and suggestions and tips from those who have been what we would call at the coal face of cash coordination and who are going to be the primary audience for the tip sheet. So it was cash working group coordinators and others that have been leading these activities in country. So in the time that we had available, um, I reviewed all the documents and feedback that came from those um, CALC consultations in the 15 countries. Um, we carried out a first key informant interviews uh, with either current cash working group coordinators or previous cash cap specialists and um, who have experience working in multiple contexts and ICCG coordinators um, and we also included representatives from donors um, and uh, the main sort of UN uh, stakeholders WFP, UNHCR and UNOCHA uh, and then we had the, a Skype group with cash coordination uh, specialists as well um, and then this round of feedback that CALP have, has been um, facilitating uh, through that process of uh, collating feedback, we also got further inputs and tips and, and that's been used to uh, uh, edit the document to date. So I would say the content really represents what people have told us who are at the face of cash coordination, who are doing this day to day and who need to use um, this sort of resource. The structure and the content, they're basically aligned with the main feedback and suggestions that, the, um, that came out of the cash working group regional consultations. So the intention is to be practical, to be easy to read, to give pragmatic tips for managing the reality of cash coordination day to day. Uh, and it's broken down into three main sections that set out sort of the where, the how and the what for cash coordination. So the where is where cash coordination and cash working groups fit inside the humanitarian system. The how is how to effectively set up and chair and manage these groups. And the what is the key functions of these groups. Uh, and in each section, uh, the tip sheet references the guidance that exists. Um, and where this is lacking, it basically highlights effective approaches that have been used, tested and used to date, promising practices, lessons learned. And it gives tips and considerations for how cash working groups can fulfill these functions and avoid uh, pitfalls and challenges. And there's an emphasis throughout on sort of multipurpose cash and multi-sectoral programming. And then it aims to um, collate and signpost readers to the tools that different cash working groups have, have used in practice to assist with these tasks, some of which are published, some of which they've developed themselves. I think it's important to also mention um, what the tip sheet does not do. Um, so clearly all these um, global debates on cash coordination around things like leadership and resourcing and the role of cash working groups are not fully resolved. So the tip sheet does not make firm recommendations on these issues, but it points to how cash working group coordinators have addressed these issues in practice and things that they've found helpful. Um, and as you can appreciate, a, a generic tip sheet of this size, it, it can't cover the, you know, the full breadth of emergency and governance context that cash coordination is going to happen in. Uh, so the tip sheet is focused on settings where clusters are rolled out, first and foremost. Um, and it does touch on some key contextual differences between response settings, uh, but it's not prescriptive and it should, it should be contextualised when it's going to be used. Um, some things are going to be more relevant in certain contexts than others. Uh, so the rest of this presentation, I'll just give a, a short overview of each of these three sections of the tip sheet. So Alice, if you can move me uh, forward one slide, please. So this is the, the where. Um, so in 2017, um, the revised intercluster coordination group terms of reference uh, noted that cash working groups are subgroups of the ICCG and that cash working group coordinators are full members of the ICCG. Uh, and then similarly, the draft products that I've mentioned that are coming out of the, the cash working group terms of reference and the cash coordination guidance, they both also make the same statements. Um, and so this section of the tip sheet reflects this guidance and it also situates the cash working group as a subgroup of the ICC. Um, makes the effectiveness of cash coordination dependent on the capacity of the ICCG and also the engagement of its members. And in many countries, the ICCGs, as presently set up, are noted to be overstretched and that there is some challenges with capacity to manage things like cross-sectoral planning and analysis. And so the tips in this section focus on what um, previous coordinators have learned about good practices to encourage effective links with the ICCG and also solutions where its capacity is limited. If you can move me forward a slide, Alice, please. So now we're looking at the, um, the 
and we're looking at the how other was I forget but we're looking at how to effectively set up chair and manage a cash working group so in terms of chairing and um, as I said before there is no clear agreement on which agency or entity should be should be leading cash coordination and should be chairing a, a A working group like this that have been used to date so things like a single versus a, a shared leadership um, a dedicated coordinator versus someone that's sort of double hatting with coordination you know on top of other existing roles um, and it makes clear that there is no single model uh, at present and it's what right will depend on context and then it gives some lessons from experience to guide the choice of model um, so things like um, talking through the importance of resourcing a dedicated chair where that is feasible where there's funds to do so um, the breadth of skill sets that's needed um, it talks about the benefit of, of having co-leads to divide tasks especially in large and complex responses and it gives tips on good practices for effective leadership leadership so things like uh, setting out the tasks and competencies um, for coordinators to in their terms of reference or in a job description um, it talks about ways to ensure adequate resourcing by host agencies um, and it talks a lot about the importance of realism when we're setting tasks that has to be set in line with capacities um, and then similarly for uh, managing a cash working group and um, the tip sheets um, uh, says that mem membership and management arrangements are best defined um, according to the context um, and the scale of the response, the resources available, um, the humanitarian caseload, things like this. And then it takes the same approach. It outlines the ways that these things have been uh, defined so far and it shows some lessons to consider when we're defining these arrangements. So things like the need to consider the amount of time that can be required by chairs and by members especially for certain coordination tasks and how that might affect people's participation um, it talks about um, techniques such as um, a rotating co-lead role um, across agencies um, and the use of um, sub-working groups technical sub-working groups and um, for specific tasks these have been effective ways to manage heavy workload in manageable number of sort of working groups at any one time um, it talks about the fact that steering committees have proven useful to guide quick and effective decision making in some places um, and it also gives tips on good practices for effective management so things like having a clear terms of reference for the group from the start setting out a collective strategy and a work plan defining ways for sharing information defining ways to ensure meaningful engagement of governments and again here Um, this importance according to the context. If you can move me forward one slide, please. And now, yeah, the final section. This is kind of the bulk of the of the tip sheet, I would say. Um, and it's about the key functions of coordinators and cash working groups. Um, and it's taking um, the inputs from uh, that draft uh, guidance on cash coordination that I've mentioned a few times. And this defines the high level role of a cash working group and also its typical functions. And to that, we've added key functions that have been highlighted by cash working groups during CALP's regional consultation meetings. Um, and the tip sheet highlights that the cash working group is facilitating interagency and intersector participation sharing, um, ensuring learning and adoption of, of common approaches across, across members. Um, it also talks about um, the fact that by providing support to and convening activities across clusters, the group does play a vital sort of pivotal role in the coordination of multipurpose cash. Um, and the chair of the cash working group, because they have this seat on the ICCG, is a link from the cash working group to the wider coordination architecture and is thus a link to be able to share evidence and output messages from the cash working group to generate high level buy in and so influence the cash response so you can see on the screen here these are basically the the high level activities and core functions of a group and these are set out in the tip sheet
if you can move me to the last one and looks at it in some detail. Um, so we've um, approached the rest of the tip sheet um, basically through a, a program cycle approach. So it's presenting each of these core functions during a typical cash program cycle. Um, and for each of the functions, um, it's setting out what the cash working group's role might look like. So the typical activities a cash working group might lead or might support, um, which might vary, you know, depending on context. Um, it sets out tips for good practices that have helped with effective um, execution of these tasks um, in, in other contexts. It also sets out uh, key considerations that um, should be borne in mind, um, things like challenges people might face in coordinating these tasks and ways to address these, which stakeholders it's engage with this type of thing. Um, and as I mentioned before, there's particular reference throughout all of these sections um, on coordination of cash multi-sectorally and on multi-purpose cash. So, for example, things like um, talking about the role that cash working groups can have in designing, in implementing, in using results from multi-sectoral market assessments, um, or how to coordinate multi-sectoral response analysis or how to achieve cross-sectoral engagement in defining um, a minimum expenditure basket, um, or how to report on multi-sectoral outcomes from cash, all of these challenges. And then for each of these functions, the tip sheet is um, basically signposting to a range of published and unpublished tools and guidance. So things that uh, people that we have um, consulted with have said have been helpful for them in fulfilling their functions in country. Um, and some of these are resources that have been developed you know, within cash working groups so they're specific to a particular response. Um, and I believe CALP is gonna collate these and, and put them online so there'll be um, uh, web links available for each of them. Um, the two areas of the tip sheet um, in, terms of, in terms of these tools that's a bit thin on the ground, um, we didn't find too many examples of tools or guidance for capacity building function and advocacy function. So, um, I know we're going to move over to sort of Q&A now, but um, from my side, that would be great if, if there's any other examples of, of tools or resources that people can share on those, um, on those aspects, that would be grand. Um, and then, yeah, the final, the final slide, uh, Alice. So, yeah, I'll finish there. Um, I believe the rest of the session is devoted to um, Q&A. Um, from my side, again, yeah, just to call out for any any further examples of, of challenges or issues that uh, uh, cash working group coordinators or people involved in cash coordination in the field have uh, have experienced that you would um, appreciate it if the tip sheet could try to address um, and any further examples of resources and I think it would be important um, for others to make use of thank you Um, Gabby, thank you so much for this, uh, yeah, this great uh, presentation on how you came about um, the, the tip sheet. Um, so we've already, we already have questions in the chat box, but we might also uh, just take a few more, um, uh, maybe live uh, from, from participants if anybody um, wants to raise uh, their hand or, or just unmute themselves and um, and, 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 and ask uh, questions, we'll, we'll go for a first round like this. So anybody? Wait, just to clarify, I think I'm a bit illiterate on how this chat works, so excuse me for that. Um, I wanted to ask, um, is there, because some of us who have provided comments on the tip sheet draft that was shared, I think in October, is there a new draft or because it looks like by some of the slides that some things that were commented on earlier um, were not yet taken into account so do you want us to comment on those things again um, also what is meant by functions i know functions it has a very strong connotation in the cluster context um, so how do you distinguish between the actual cluster functions which are described in eask guidance and what you are proposing for a cash working group Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Um, yeah, so, okay, because, yeah, the, the strategy was that we had was maybe not the best. So we'll, we maybe go first to the, the questions that were asked in the, in the chat box, because one of the, the, the things that you were asking, Renee, is how uh, the comments have been addressed so far. 
Um, then we also had, uh, so maybe this I will uh, let Sophie answer this one. And then we have a question on, um, one of your questions on, on guidance. Um, yeah, maybe this needs to be clarified. Um, um, and then maybe this we could do with Gabby. Um, somebody from the food security cluster um, is asking uh, for more clarification uh, when we discuss um, the monit the role of cash working groups in monitoring, then what is, how does this work with uh, the role of clusters? And, uh, and maybe we'll have to answer uh, Renee's question also on functions. And I think there were more. And there's a question uh, from Corey on how to handle uh, market assessment information systematically. Um, so maybe we, we start with the, the, the how, how comments were addressed with uh, Sophie. Sure, thank you very much, Alice, and thanks, Renee, for your questions. Um, yeah, why don't I take how we've addressed the comments that we've received so far and how we'll integrate the comments that we're receiving today and then hand over to Gabby for the three more technical questions. And Gabby, feel free, once you've, once you've made a start, to bounce anything else back to me. So on the guidance, uh, yes, as mentioned, many of you on this call have very helpfully fed back um, your ideas and your comments on the tip sheet. We have integrated those where possible and particular thanks to those of you who, um, who shared with us resources, tools, guidance. There's, there's clearly a lot of knowledge out there. So we've integrated those where possible. Um, we will integrate also comments uh, received on this webinar and we will circulate a final draft um, prior to publication, so you'll be able to see how your comments have been addressed. Uh, I think that sounds good on the guidance front. Um, Gabby, can we ping the questions over to you on monitoring role of clusters versus cash working group uh, and the question on the MEB and then, and then anything else, feel free to ping back to me. Yeah, sure. But what what's exactly the questions? I'm sorry, I can't I can't hear Alice very well. What are, what are the questions that have been asked? Um, so there was uh, a question from Renee. If I have if I understood it well, it was uh, to understand since the the tip sheet is not uh, a guidance. Well, yeah, maybe the book. Sorry, I'll come back. Um, so there was a, qu a question on um, when cash working groups have a role in monitoring, then how does that work with the roles that cluster have uh, with monitoring? And then there was a question on clarifying the use of the word uh, wording functions uh, when things like, for example, the MEB uh, would be perceived more as um, or is more a, a, a tool. So this was a question for, from Jimena. I hope this is, uh, is this okay, Gabby? Could you? Okay, I mean, I'll try and answer them. I'm just going back to the, excuse me, to the, can you hear me all right? To the tip sheet, because um, they're quite sort of in-depth specific questions. Just bear with me one second. I'm just scrolling up it um, to where we talk about the function. Yeah, so so the we have a box in the tip sheet that sets out core functions and minimum activities of cash working groups and cash coordinators. And these are, um, as I said in the presentation, these are basically taken from the draft um, uh, global cluster coordination group uh, guidance um, on cash coordination. Um, and it's been elaborated further with the, the points that came from the consultations from CALP um, with the cash working groups. And uh, I, I mean, we haven't given a, a, a precise definition of um, what we mean by the word function. And if people think that that is useful, then I think, you know, we can, we can include this into the tip sheet. Um, my take on it is it, it, it's, the, it's the high level separate definitive tasks that um, a cash working group would be tasked with um, so as you can see um, from that slide that I put up it's um, um, it's basically the the specific um, sort of high level activities around the program cycle um, from assessment all the way through to um, sort of monitoring and learning and reporting uh, and then for each of those um, what I've called functions we then break down that further into what it could typically entail um, 
which would have to be contextualized um, you know according to um where you were planning to implement the tip sheet so as an example um let's go to the the meb one because that was part of the next question wasn't it just bear with me sorry it takes a while to scroll down yeah so so designing the meb and um, so each one of these high level functions and um, we set out um what the role of a cash coordinator and cash working group could typically look like and it lists um a bunch of um potential um activities and tasks um, and this is based on experience from what other cash coordinators have got involved and cash working groups have got involved in um in the past so for the monitoring if uh, so for the meb it is things like um advocating for active engagement of clusters in the MEB process and um, establishing with the clusters the contents of the basket based on existing needs assessments um, I'm just reading from the tip sheet here um, collating and sharing existing data sources on expenditures and on costs of living and um, bringing together actors to facilitate the process of calculating a harmonized basket across the sectors um seeking inputs to the meb from each cluster and facilitating cross cluster work to avoid duplication um understanding issues specific to different cluster inputs and ensuring that this is reflected in the meb presenting outputs at the iccg for endorsements if they're required to do so um and yes so you can you can um uh, sort of get the picture that's the that's the idea is that and the tip sheet sort of talks through the high level the high level uh, functions and then breaks that role might involve um for each of those high level functions i hope that's kind of answered what you were expecting thank you gabby um what sorry, sorry yeah well, i said did you have another question was that or was that both of them no, this was uh, this was it so far. But I think that rather than me interpreting or reading out the questions that were asked, I will ask uh, Isabel if if she can be kind enough to unmute and ask her question directly, if that's okay. You, Gabby? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Sure. <clears throat> Hi all. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Um. <laughs> um I, yeah. I. I in all these discussions on cash coordination, one of the distinctions that's frequently been made is between strategic and technical coordination and then mm -hmm. adding the operational element as well. And I know that that's been at the source of some of the challenges. And so I was wondering how, if at all, you've used that distinction in the tip sheet. Mm -hmm. The quick answer is we haven't used it <laughs> because of these reasons. Um, mm -hmm. and, and also because really it's... I don't know how useful the distinction it is to keep, you know, to keep separating te you know, technical and operational versus strategic, because a lot of these core functions that we have in the box in the tip sheet, they have, they have both strategic and technical elements to them, depending on how you define what constitutes something strategic, you know. Um, so as an example, you know, the, the operationalization, you know, the technical pulling together of and of a you know of the components of an MEB that that can be considered a you know a highly technical task right but then promotion of that and advocating for the need for you know a, a cash a cash transfer value which um fits the, the the gap in needs based on that MEB that's a strategic discussion and a cash working group and a cash coordinator of that group can have a role in both um and by playing that sort of important sort of linkage between the ICCG and the cash working group you know they they are engaged in strategic in strategic um roles but within i'd say within that sort of context of um of cluster guidance if that makes sense so uh, yeah the short answer is we've tried to avoid that language but just to understand that the functions and the tasks under those functions are are inherently both thanks that makes a lot of sense and very pragmatic thank yeah. you can I just uh, ask a clarifying question, or I don't know how you, if this is what you have in mind for managing this meeting, but I just kind of wanted to react on some of these points, because mm. in the way that you're describing the functions, I feel like maybe you need a different word then, because okay. the word of core functions in this cluster world, we associate this with the ask guidance. So can, saying cash working groups, they have these functions, 
Um, but then clusters, they have these other core functions. I think you need to do a little bit, and I think it was one of the comments that I provided on the tip sheet that we're not actually following the existing um, guidance. So if we are creating the cash working group as a sub working group alongside a kind of area of accountability, et cetera, et cetera, then we need to be clear, careful. Yeah. About so what language, then, what language would you use then? What word would you, do you think is a better word? Activities, activities. Um, sure. Something like this. I, uh, I mean, or, you know, task, something like this. Now, okay, how, we, fine. how we understand the role here as well, um, which I don't feel like, and also I'm having difficulty to follow because the slides went very quickly, so I don't know what new revisions have come in the tip sheet. I think that issue of the role of the cash working group. Now, we talk, you, and you mentioned very well in your speech just now about the strategic discussions at the ICCG level. Um, so there again, we need to say, okay, yes, the cash working group, it has a very technical and operational role. I think on some issues we need to maybe, even in the tasks that you called for functions, I think we need to roll back the language just a little bit um, because on some issues, it's not true that the cash working group would lead. Um, it's more of a supporting function. Like we talk about, for instance, uh, housing markets. It's something that requires much more of an engineering and much more of an architect kind of knowledge and maybe something that cash working groups maybe can support in the tools and guidance, but they won't necessarily take the lead for this thing. So I think uh, um, this kind of getting the dynamic right about, okay, cash working groups, they technically do these things, but it's at the ICCG where the strategic decision making happens. And it's also within the clusters where sometimes the strategic decision making happens. And I think this is also coming from the April meeting that the shelter and wash clusters had where we said, you know, it's not only just that the shelter and wash partners need to be at the cash working group meeting. It's actually that the cash meet, the cash partners also and wash and it's not, I mean, clusters are more than meetings. So it's, it's about getting that dynamic right to foster the better collaboration from both sides. Um, so I think we need to get the terminology right. And I think we need to understand that dynamic. So I think I would be hesitant to say that we have a cash working group as a strategic decision-making body on itself. It does a number of good technical tasks that can support the strategic decision-makers who may be, you know, the more sectoral expertise. Mm. Yeah, te this, this is Gabby just having a bit of a, um, a, a point back on the, yeah, on the activities. I think, yes, um, absolutely fine. Let's change, let's change the language from activities, from functions to activities. I'll let Sophie come in on the, on the other point you made, but well noted. Yeah, thanks, Renee. Um, some very rich feedback there. Um, I think just I wanted to, to re-emphasize what Gabby said about the, the distinction between strategic and technical and just note that this comes directly from cash working group coordinators themselves. It's not a helpful distinction at the field level, we are told. Uh, all these functions that are, oh, sorry, these activities that a cash working group does have both elements. And I think that's such an important point that Gabby made and want to re-emphasize it. So um, point taken on the language. Um, I'm not sure that I quite followed all of the, um, all of the follow-up, but, uh, but yeah, I, I wanted to re-emphasize Gabby's point because I think it's super important. Yeah. And would, would you mind if I just mentioned one more, one more Please, thing, Sophie, just as a, as a, as a follow-up, I think I, I will go back through, you know, the final draft of the tip sheet and I will have that sort of hat on for sort of nuance on language in my in my opinion the last draft as is we are very clear that we are not ever suggesting that a cash working group is sort of forging ahead leading strategy um, it it is always in the context of that sort of intercluster coordination group seat and it is always in in participation and in, in conjunction with clusters and under under you know under the solicitation of clusters where necessary um, and m most of the, you know, the bullet points that sort of drop down the different, the different tasks under those core activities of cash working groups, they, they specify lead or support, lead or support in, in many cases. Um, so yeah. Yeah. So I just, I just want to respond. Thank you very much uh, to you and Sophie. I just wanted to respond to Sophie's point there about, you know, that the, that the field says that the distinction is not helpful. I think, yes, if we talk about it in a political sense, yes, but I think in the implementation sense, it starts to matter. So as a former field uh, subnational shelter cluster coordinator and also having talked with a number of my field cluster coordinators, I think that once we get into the, the areas of 
um, coordinating, for example, winterization, when we have cash working groups coming up with their own um, prices for winterization items that differ from that of the shelter clusters. And then when we have one uh, entity like the shelter cluster that has all this coordination and you have two different distribution amounts in two places, it ended up on the shelter cluster to coordinate that element. Um, and so better cooperation, I think, and better understanding from the cash working group coordinator and the cash working group partners about where that accountability lies, I think that does end up making quite a huge difference in the lives of beneficiaries, actually. And so I think, I think us, as maybe the policy folks at Geneva level, I think us understanding that and getting that formula right, it will have a, you know, hopefully the goal of more effective programming, not just a he said, she said discussion. So I think once we have those discussions and meetings with partners, of course they don't care. But I think a lot of partners cared that uh, cash working group minimum expenditure basket in the middle of winter differed from that of the, the technically sound market assessment that the shelter cluster had done. So these are some realities of field level. And I think from a technical perspective, this is, this is why I am so concerned about getting the language right, because it's, and it, this is stuff that partners, of course, they shouldn't have to stress about, but it will be something that this is some of, some of the sources of the tensions and the, the potential programming that we can improve. That's just from field perspective. Thank you. Thanks, Renee. Useful feedback. Um, given that there are a number of people on the call and we and some pop comments popping up in the text box, maybe, um, yeah. yeah. Just maybe if I can ask you, Sophie, to clarify, because there were two comments, uh, one from the food security cluster, and one from Dina, related to the guidance that is mentioned uh, in the tip sheet. So yeah. if you can just clarify the comment that you made in the chat box so everybody has this clear. Sure, thank you very much. So yes, indeed, uh, as Gabby mentioned in the presentation, um, cash cap supported by CALP supported the uh, global cluster coordination group to develop cash coordination guidance for cluster leads. Now that guidance has been a long time in development. Um, it's still being reviewed by the GCCG and is to the best of my knowledge at this time, not finalized. The GCCG have also drafted a cash working group terms of reference that they're in the final stages of discussing um, and is to the best of my knowledge, not finalized. So the draft of the tip sheet as is references these documents, all the references are highlighted if the documents are published by the time the tip sheet is published we will reference them um, both and use this as a document to signpost the key areas of that guidance if it's not published we will be able to reference um, key elements that came out in the discussions that kelp and cash cap um, led on behalf of the gccg but we will of course not reference the documents and in their final state until they're published if anyone on the call, we have a number of GCCG representatives, if anyone on the call has an update on the status of those documents, that would be great. But that, um, that is the, the rule of thumb as of now. Um, okay, so maybe we go back to uh, Gabby to answer uh, the, the question of Corey on how to, um, how to handle market assessment information systematically. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm so so I'm so sorry because it keeps breaking up it was something about market assessment how to handle yeah how to handle market assessment information systematically um, if, if it is outside of a, of a cash working groups mandate how to, han to handle I'm just writing it down how to handle market assessment information systematically um, um, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Okay, I've got the question now. So, so it's it's whether this is in the tip sheet or whether I think it's a mandate for the cash working group. Is that no? It's it, it was more I think a concern on how to do it uh, if it is outside of a cash working group mandate. Um, I'm really sorry. I'm not understanding the question at all. Maybe, maybe it's, sorry, if you're online, are you able to unmute and just clarify the question? <laughs> Uh, am I unmuted? Yes, yes, we yeah. hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, just in terms of um, the things that it was saying it, it covered, often uh, I think cash working coordinators and okay, assessments kind of go up, and, and even though that still happens in the sectoral groups, just wondering if there were tips for cash working coordinators to yeah, coordinate with the 
going market assessments basically okay so i'm just scrolling down i'll tell you what's in the market assessment bit so under cash feasibility assessment sort of core what we're now calling core activities um we break down that that role um, into um, market assessment and then other aspects of feasibility assessment like financial service provider mapping assessment etc cetera, etc cetera. so under market assessment and we we are sort of having here the focus um, as particularly again on like multi multi-sectoral market assessment as well uh, so we outline four um, aspects to that role what it might look like um, so they are sharing and where possible consolidating results of market assessments from individual agencies to avoid duplication of effort, um, promoting use of standard tools and methods um, for assessments to enable comparability you know, across partners or across locations, actually having a role in convening joint or multi-sectoral market assessments and price monitoring, and then assisting cluster coordinators on specific assessments that might be relevant for their sectors, like for you know, specific markets. Um, and if you and then there's some tips as well just bear with me um uh so yes the tips that are mentioned at the moment if one wants to add to these you know feel free um so we talk about um ensuring that any activities that are directly convened by a cash working group focus on filling gaps and complementing the existing work of clusters so i think this speaks to what renee was talking about before you know it's a, it's a two-way process right in, in terms of um communication and, and and collaboration um and it gives an example so there was one country where um in the case of market monitoring the wfp was leading on monitoring of food prices but then joint monitoring under the cash working group was focused on monitoring non-food items um as an example thanks so much gabby um, I think now uh, maybe we can turn to Juliet, who has her hand uh, raised. Juliet, if you can unmute and ask your question. Sure. I hope you can hear me. It was actually on the question that was responded to by Gabby and the concern that Kari had. Um, so I think, um, as Kari mentioned, the responsibility from assessments like where do they look, where do they lie, and um, and just to mention also that with HP. Process, the new humanitarian programs like the process, so the new humanitarian overviews, the humanitarian response uh, plans, uh, there is quite a significant provision now for the inclusion of systematic market assessment, particularly looking multi sectorally, within these plans and within these processes. So there's a small two page that we have drafted, which is online, which kind of signposts where, uh, particularly the market assessment, that should link and link. Where that should be undertaken in terms of the process of the planning process, um, and also um, the reference to in there is obviously the importance of, it, of actors who may be responsible for that collection, but also where those actors may have the information that have kind of traditionally not actually been drawn upon as part of that kind of work as well. Um, so I think that that was kind of just one thing I wanted to highlight in terms of that responsibility. So that really, that responsibility for ensuring that that information is there should really be built in throughout the, throughout the whole response. And then I just kind of wanted to make one quick comment because I saw Nick I had also raised a comment regarding um, the kind of uh, cash working groups being club groups of cluster and where that had been kind of referring. So just to say, obviously there is you know, the cluster in terms of reference, which, is, which references it. It is not uh, what we would call kind of prescriptive. That is to say that where cash working group that reference, um, you know, there's been no kind of particular prescription for that. What I would say is that out of the 23 contexts that we're aware of, where there is a um, about 21 of these are in some way linked to the industry, either formally or standing in terms of reference. So in terms of that engagement, particularly the context of how to ensure that these cash working groups are also kind of you know, systematically supported, linked into the system. Uh, I think that that's something that we can kind of perhaps uh, kind of take offline, but just to say that globally speaking, that, that would be the broader trend that we're seeing. Um, so I think I'll stop there, but of course, if there's any other clarifications, particularly on the um, uh, that Sophie mentioned, the two documents in particular guidance and the cash working in terms of reference. Uh, as you correctly mentioned, these are still under discussion at the moment. Uh, 
um, as of yet, they are not agreed. Uh, so keeping those references to the fact that at the time of publication, they were they were not uh, actually fully agreed would be preferable as well. Thank you. Um, thanks, Julia. So we were hoping that we were the only one uh, not hearing you so well, but I think, yeah, maybe it, it, it didn't come across the, so clearly um, to all. Um, but I think, so I think we're, we're um, through the, yeah, so we're, we're sorry, <laughs> Juliet. Um, but yeah, uh, um, as far as, um, as the process go, um, yeah, we'll take, uh, I mean, we've taken all the, the comments from today and the draft uh, will be circulated, circulated to all the who, those who commented uh, before finalization. So that will be another um, great opportunity. Um, I don't see any more questions. I don't know if um, anybody uh, still has some or some uh, comments. Maybe there was one question. I know when we were looking at the activities, there was something mentioned about the cash working group um, working on non-duplication of cluster activities. Um, it, but wouldn't that go a bit, a bit above and beyond the cash working group? Um, that's just kind of my reaction to that. Yeah. Gabby, is the, the question clear to you? Can you answer this one? Uh, <laughs> hopefully, I, hopefully I can. Can you, can you say it again, Renee? Sorry. The line is really bad. Yeah, I, don't, we have, I sometimes think that we have worse uh, internet here in Geneva <laughs> than we do in Bangui. Um, so the, um, my question was, there was a list is that you were listing off, Gabby, in terms mm, of the yeah. activities. So uh, yeah, we're renaming the functions to activities yeah. of the cash working group. And one of them seemed to be something about uh, between clusters, um, this idea of uh, duplication between cluster activities. Um, so I thought, doesn't that go a bit above and beyond a cash working group? Um, so just that was one of my reactions to that. So I think we have to be a bit careful in the scope um, and also I think we get a bit confused sometimes when we go into the areas of market analysis, which might be very technical, not something that's purely in a cash working group. And then also in this whole response analysis, which is much more ICCG. So I think it's just getting. Okay. I'm just looking at what I was saying. Um, are, you, are you referring to when I was talking about the market assessment tips, right? The activities um, and the, and the, the tips. activities. Yeah. So there was something that I don't know if it was specific to market assessments, but it said something about, um, in, that the cash working group would ensure that there was non-duplication between clusters. I feel that's going a bit above and beyond the scope of the cash working okay. group. Okay, um, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't gone back up to the, the, the overall functions. Under market assessments, I did say, I said sharing and where possible consolidating results of market assessments to avoid duplication of effort. Um, but I mean, that's, that is just standard practice of cash working groups, you know, the, the idea that you wouldn't have, you know, 20 different organizations undertaking, you know, very similar events. Um, uh, I don't know whether that's what you're referring to. Um, and then there was a tip for successful coordination to ensure that any activities directly convened by the cash working group focus on filling gaps and complementing what clusters are already doing. Um, so again, I mean, you can say that there's a, there's a, there's a, I guess, like a, a, an objective there around avoiding duplication of effort again. But that's, I wouldn't say that's the cash working group overstepping their mark, is it? Isn't that just like sort of them, you know, being, uh, being aware of what else is going on and trying to, you know, focus where they add most value, um, you know, at, where, and, and taking almost like a sort of sub role. So the clusters taking the lead role and doing whatever market assessments they're doing. The cash working group are coming in and, and filling gaps. Um, I mean, that's my take on what's written anyway. That's what I meant okay. by Okay, all right. That, yeah. that, clarif that, that clarifies. Yeah, that clarifies yeah. a bit. I think, yeah, I think we just need to be conscientious that hopefully there is better coordination um, from these groups. I think that sometimes some of the blockage at country level yep. <laughs> is just the lack of sometimes willingness to be accountable to 
cluster strategies from the cash working group side, but also vice versa, um, lack of willingness to contribute. I mean, and ultimately all these mechanisms are made of the people who compose them. So I yes, guess and it's a two way street, formula. like you say. Exactly. Um, so this is, but I think we also, when we're doing the guidance, right? I mean, uh, to coming off another uh, work stream that we had yesterday, I think it's, um, it's important to make sure that we get the balance correct when we're describing that to field level practitioners, because sometimes that's where things get in the heat of emergency, things can get confused. Um, Thank th yeah, thanks so much, uh, Renee and Gabby and, and Renee, like you say, it's, uh, it's, it's extremely important that it's, uh, it, it works the, yeah, two ways. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so maybe now to Dina, uh, to Dina's question, um, maybe this is more so for Sophie, uh, can you clarify if the tip sheet is encouraging inclusion of an MPC uh, chapter in the HRP uh, or not? Sure, thank you, uh, Alice, and thanks Dina for the question. This is a bit of a double act between Gabby and myself, because uh, Gabby uh, came up with the original wording and then you and I have had a bit of a back and forth on this since so I'll, I'll take it and then Gabby if there's anything to add please do jump in. So what we've, um, what we've put into the section about how to integrate cash into the HRP is noting that the new humanitarian program cycle guidance that's out for this year includes an optional section for multi-purpose cash um, and discretion should obviously be used at the country level as to whether or not that's needed, whether that's appropriate in a, in a context in which multi-purpose cash is not being programmed and would not be appropriate, then of course um, it's at the discretion of that country to decide that a multi-purpose cash section is not relevant and is not useful. However, we have reflected in the tip section that one of the major pain points that we hear from cash working group uh, coordinators in the field is that multipurpose cash currently doesn't have a home. So it's very difficult um, to understand how to properly, how properly plan and report multipurpose cash. And in contexts such as Iraq is the most notable context where a multipurpose cash chapter has been trialed. The feedback we've had is that that has proven useful from a kind of organizing perspective in terms of planning and reporting. So we've included that feedback in the tips, but noted that the global level agreement as per the HPC guidance that came out recently is there is an optional multi-purpose cash section and that should absolutely be uh, up to each context to decide based on the operational realities in that context. I hope that answers the question. And, and sorry, Gabby, I should say anything to add to that? No, no, spot on. That's exactly what we've done. Um, can we, so um, uh, the question maybe from my side is a follow-up to that. Um, will this tip sheet reflect any global discussions about some of the um, need for the technical sectors to get some sort of, you know, outcome monitoring um, on that? Because I think one thing is the HRP, which is just a plan, right? Um, which it's fine. Um, but then I think once we start to get into the first quarter implementation, uh, second quarter, the half year reporting, uh, the end of year reporting, when we talk about some of our protracted conflicts that we have, I think that's when a lot of our shelter cluster coordinators and a lot of our shelter cluster field people, this is when we start to say, yes, multipurpose cash was great for the stage of the emergency. Now we can see the prioritization. How do we know um, what is the outcome of that? So will there be any um, aspect of that talking about um, multi-purpose caches reporting against the sectoral standards and how we can get a better read on that just to enhance our overall multi-sectoral response? I'm sorry, Gabby, this, this one might be one you, you would say, but I would say that's quite, um, I would say that's not a universal interpretation of what multi-purpose cash is and how it should work. Um, Gabby, any reflections on that? I, I'm just, again, scrolling down my document to <laughs> have a look at what we said, uh, because we have got a monitoring and reporting section and we do make reference to, um, let's see, to, you know, to the cash working group's role in sort of monitoring of multi-purpose cash. And um, we talk about the, 
um, that going forward, donors and hopefully agencies are going to be, um, you know, adopting these these core outcome indicators for multi-purpose cash that have been developed and tested. You know, the ones under the grand bargain work stream. We've seen that USAID has um, has adopted those in, in the last few weeks, um, and so that does include a menu of core outcome indicators per sector um, and then the other sort of overarching ones on, on vulnerability and well-being things like the coping strategies index and we give guidance or tips that this should be you know refined and agreed upon at the level of the response because um depending on the context you know, it, there will be different different sectoral outcomes that are going to be um possible or likely um or prioritized um through multi-purpose cash uh, and then it goes through um what's the role of the again the role of the cash working group might look like um to sort of support this so i'm just seeing what, what is said about multi-purpose cash so what is said it says um, there's two things there's promoting use of common outcome indicators for reporting on multi-purpose cash with all multi-purpose cash partners and then leading on the consolidation of reporting on multi-purpose cash um up to the iccg and or clusters to avoid gaps and duplication that is that is as it's written at the moment um and then is there anything in the tips da, 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 da. let's see um yeah sort of av advocating for the tracking of assistance per modality um and for the separation of um, multi-purpose cash and sector specific grants um and to avoid overly heavy, heavily monitoring of multi-purpose cash, um, there's, a, there's a tip to collectively define a handful of the core essential, what we might call the priority indicators. And you know, this is basically coming from that, you know, the, the core outcome indicators um, project. Thank you so much, uh, Gabby, for this very clear um, and great reply. Um, it, are there any more uh, questions? We, we do have time, so if there's any other question, comment, um, feel free. And just to note, while you're all thinking of your next brilliant question, um, as we said in the beginning of this webinar, we really want this to reflect the best of what we collectively know about cash coordination and what works well. So if there are cash working group coordinators on this call um, who have tools, resources, uh, tips that they found super helpful that aren't included today, please do continue to send those to us. Um, and we will integrate them because I think there's a lot of good learning out there and we want this to reflect it to the extent, to the extent possible. So back over to you guys. Any final questions, comments, thoughts, critiques? We're open to everything. Um, yeah, so it looks like we're <laughs> out of questions. Um, yeah, hopefully it's a, it's a good sign. Um, I'll uh, give the mic back to Sophie for um, for for final words. Thanks, Alice. Sorry, maybe before I um, offer some final thoughts for what they're worth, Gabby, anything jumping out you out at you from this feedback? Anything that you would particularly like ask to ask people to go away and think about when it comes to providing additional feedback? Any final thoughts from you? Um, I mean, from my side, Julie noted the two sort of takeaways I've, I've, I've got from this. I've just been hammering them out. Sorry if you could hear me typing is is to change the is to reflect on the wording to change functions to activities. Um, but to reflect on the wider wording just to make sure that it doesn't cause any confusion um, and also it probably is important I think it's there implicitly but maybe it needs to be more explicit to make some sort of reference on the need for for a sort of that it's a two-way street and that it's 
um, that cash working group coordinators and cash working groups do have a responsibility for, let's say, meeting clusters halfway. That's how I've written it down on my page. Um, you know, sort of fitting in with their plans and priorities, understanding their concerns, engaging in their meetings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I think in that sort of activities section, I will yeah give all that part to and just make sure that you know the the tips and the the tips and the considerations that we're listing reflect both halves of the you know of the story um so that's from my side and and yeah what i said at the beginning when i handed over after the presentation if there's any more tools and resources that people want to share that would be very helpful great thank you so much gabby and i think um i'd like to offer a huge thanks to you on behalf of us and the cash working group leads and everyone for this fantastic piece of work i think you've done an incredibly thorough job at shedding some light on issues which have been long-standing pain points for our colleagues and the cash working groups um, so i just want to close by saying a huge thank you to all of you for taking time out of your busy days to um, to listen to this webinar and to offer reflections in terms of next steps we will um, just to add to Gabby's two takeaways, I think well noted that the two uh, documents that are under development by the GCCG are unfortunately not yet published and, and it looks unlikely that they will be published by the time we go to press. So we will change those references um, accordingly. And this can remain a live document. So when those documents are published, we can update the document to make sure that that's properly reflected. So really great to have that update. Thanks uh, to those of you in the, G in the GCCG, in the global cluster side. Um, yeah, I think, I think we want this to be a live process. We want, um, we want to continue collecting your kind of best hints and tips. We want to keep this over time as something that does reflect the state of the art in terms of um, cash working group leads, cash working group coordinators experiences and tips. So do keep those coming. In terms of process from here on out, we will, as Gabby said, integrate the, the clear feedback that we've had on this call, which she has outlined. Um, we will share an updated draft back with those who have provided comments, and then we will look to publish the final version by the end of this year. So uh, if anyone is interested in seeing the current draft, we, we can share that with you now, um, and the final version will be completed by the end of the year for broader circulation. So thanks so much for taking the time today. Huge thanks to Gabby for her hard work on this, not an easy task. Um, and please do let us know bilaterally if following this webinar you have any brilliant ideas about resources to share. Thank you so much. Thank you.